The following is a hoop ball presentation. Uh, what, what's up, guys? Welcome to the show. I'm your host, David Williams. I have with me again today, Mr. Lyle Swithin Bank from the uh, Pelican Scoop, the hoop ball Pelicans coverage. Lyle, welcome to the show again, sir. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back. Um, yeah, feeling feeling very excited to to talk some hoops today. We are getting close. We are very close to the restart of the NBA season. If it does indeed go on, there have been uh, more reports today of people setting out or missing because they tested positive. So I don't know where that's going to go, but. Right now we're right around the three week mark of uh of well, just the countdown. Getting excited, getting ready for basketball to come back. I know that I'm ready for it. Yeah, I'm gearing up for it. Um chopping at the bit really. I've been watching the basketball tournament on ESPN. Um has been my only source of basketball at the moment. Um yeah, so gearing up for the NBA. You can see them all flying in there now and the Twitter feeds are going wild with guys uh testing positive to Corona or uh, deciding to sit out. So going to be very, very interesting to see what teams are actually put on the floor and, and, and in what form, I guess, uh, when we actually do fire back up on the, uh, on the 30th of July. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, uh, you know, I, I was going to say this for a little bit later, but we can go ahead and we've, we've jumped right into it here. You know, the, the Nets are one team that, that are really, you know, they've got four guys, not including the two injuries that they had, you know, in, in Kyrie and KD. But they have four other guys that are not going to be at the bubble because of Corona. And so it's our COVID. But, you know, what what kind of roster, what are the Nets going to look like without, you know, you got Spencer Dinwiddie, DeAndre Jordan, Wilson Chandler, and now today uh, – I saw it first from uh, Adrian Wojnarowski that uh, Taran Prince is uh, positive and he will not be going to the bubble. So that they are not going to be uh, any, anybody that is matching up against the Nets. It's like you're going to be getting a, a G League team, <laughs> maybe. I, I don't know what's going to happen there. That's uh, that roster is definitely looking pretty thin at this point. Absolutely. And I mean, they signed Tyler Johnson, but again, he'd been uh, floating around as a free agent for a, for a little while. And again, is he a guy that moves the needle? Probably not. Um, you know, those key pieces that aren't going, um, I mean, we're going to see a lot of Jared Allen. We're going to see a lot of uh, Karis LeVert. I think he might be shooting 35 shots a game um, purely just because they'll have those available. There'll be no one else to do it. So Going, will they make another roster move and, and pick someone up? I mean, there's still guys out there that, that could probably join the roster and um, and expand them. But again, they're sitting there holding on to that, um, oh, well, yeah, the seventh spot, I think it is at the moment. And, you know, they've got to win some games. Those, those eight games are going to be critical for them, um, especially with, I mean, the Wizards have lost a few guys as well. And Buell sitting out... Um, as of today, he's announced. So going to be interesting to see who fights for that final uh, spot and whether or not the Magic holds on to it or, or the Wizards somehow magic something up, uh, mind the pun, um, to to take that spot. Or if the Nets just free fall, that East is wide open now. I thought it was probably said and done, but now I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's, you know, uh Bertans was already setting out and he got a little bit of uh, a little lash back because of that. And, and I kind of understand his point, you know, he's going into free agency. And so uh, why risk it? Why risk it for him? You know, he he's looking at a pretty decent payday going into free agency. If he goes and he plays, they don't, you know, they don't make the, the playoffs and he gets injured. Then, he could lose a significant amount of money. So I was not on the side of, of having an issue with him setting out or even the, the Avery Bradley deal because of his family. You know, he didn't, didn't want to take the chance of, of putting his, his child at risk, completely understand that it's just, it's going to be 
weird to see what the the nets are going to do what the you know the the wizards are only missing a couple guys in Bertans and Beal at this point i've not heard of anyone else from from them that is going to be setting out but the nets are going to have to get they're going to have to sign free agents because of everybody that they're missing and what kind of chemistry what kind of team are you going to put on the court obviously you're going to have some guys that have been there that have played together through the season cuz you still you know you have a 15 man roster you're missing four guys there's still guys there, but even the, the guys that they had, you know, you're missing DeAndre Jordan and Dinwiddie and Prince. Like those guys were key guys on that team, and they ate up a lot of minutes on the floor. So, what kind of who is out there that you're going to go and get that's going to be able to take that kind of minutes? And and they're definitely not going to bring that type of production. Absolutely, I mean. Yeah, there's no like-for-like players out there. I mean, you can't just go and sign a a new Kevin Durant, can you, to (laughs) to replace a guy like that? Um, So the Nets are are definitely in a precarious situation as to what's going to happen there. I mean, do you just run the young guys and and treat it as an opportunity to to get some minutes into some of those those guys that um, probably missed out with the changing of the guard with Kenny Atkinson um, getting sacked and... And then, um, and then, then moving DeAndre Jordan into the starting lineup. I mean, Jared Allen is a guy that should be playing anyway, in my opinion. I think he's a great player, and um, so any more of him to see, I think he'll be he'll be key there. But otherwise, yeah, the Nets are just in disarray. I mean, in terms of the chemistry, that is like you said, that is going to be a huge factor. These guys are basically going to be introduced to guys that they may not have even known before to start right, playing yeah. with, and they've got eight games to get it right before they head into a playoff schedule against guys like Giannis or, um, you know, the Raptors are a great side. Philly's no doubt going to come back firing. Celtics as well. Yeah, the East yeah. at the top end is fairly stacked, and if your team is a little bit uncertain, you're just going to get absolutely rolled. It the, the thing, when they made the move to start DeAndre over Allen... I didn't understand that, and, and I'll tell you why. I went to a game early in the season. It was actually the Grizzlies' first win of the season against the Nets. They, like, DeAndre Jordan had no go in him. You know, went back when he was in L.A. and just a defensive juggernaut, like, you saw a fire. You saw, like, he would put out the extra effort to get there to make the block and it just looked like he was standing around with his feet in the mud and I didn't get obviously I think that the talent is still there and maybe maybe it showed you know in practice maybe he turned it around but in that game in Memphis I was like man I know he's definitely not old but like by NBA standards he is a little bit it, did, did he fall off that much that he just doesn't have that next gear anymore? Is it completely gone or does he just not want to try? And, you know, there's no, we're not going to know that answer to that for sure. But, you know, Jared Allen being young and, and he's already, you know, he's fearless. He will go up. He's been, uh, been dunked on a few times, but he's also blocked a few dunks and, and guys like that, it, you know, it's a risk versus reward. And he's going to take his chances. He'll take the lumps because he's going to – I think he's going to end up blocking about as many times as he gets dunked on, really. So Absolutely. Yeah, that that one just didn't – it didn't didn't do it for me. I didn't understand that one, but it is what it is. So we'll, we'll move on from that. You know, it, it is uh, – we, we're the reason I brought you back on, we want to talk about the Pelicans. We want to talk about the Grizzlies and, uh, and the race in the West. And actually, before we dig into that, let's – I, I, there's a few things that have been going on with Zion that I wanted to talk about, kind of get your, your point of view on it and see what you think about it. And then I, I have a few things to say about it and it, it's not me bashing Zion as it was last time that you were on. <laughs> um, so it, it was last week. I don't remember the day, but uh, NBA 2K released their, I think they call it the futures cover with Zion uh, as the cover athlete. And that it, there's been, Obviously, for me on Twitter, I have, you know, I follow a lot more people that are Grizzlies fans 
And, you know, I have some, I've been trying to add some people from the Pelicans fan base that are not real toxic. And so I'm, I'm seeing a, a mixture of people that were, oh, he doesn't deserve it versus the people that were super happy that he got it because they're Pelicans fans. And uh, where were you at with that? Were you, uh, were you okay with him getting the, uh, the cover of 2K already? Or do you feel like it's a little premature? Um, well, I mean, the way 2K has been headed, you know, they're, they're releasing the new Xbox um, and PlayStation in the coming years. So I think that's well, this year, I think. And so that's why he will be the, the cover of the next generation uh, 2K games. For me, I think it's fair that, that he's landed this and I'm happy for him. I mean, this guy looks like he's going to be an absolute beast in the 19 games. You know, yeah, it's a small sample size, but again, he hasn't put a foot wrong. Um, he probably is going to be the face of the league going forward if he can stay healthy, touch wood. Um, so I'm not too upset about that. I mean, they introduced guys like LaMelo Ball and, and RJ Barrett and all these other young guys into the game as well as, as next-gen stars. So for me, I suppose the, the headliner of, of all of that are guys like Zion, like Ja Morant. But I think Zion is this own brand in himself. He's this marketing behemoth and they would have done all that research to say who is the guy that everyone's going to identify with i mean he's, he's not zion williams and um pelicans player he's he's zion and i think he's bigger than than the brand and, and i think that's why they've they've tapped him on the shoulder and, and fingers crossed he develops into this player that is so hotly hyped and and um yeah i mean i might be a bit biased as a pelicans guy but again I wasn't mad to see it unveiled and, and I think good on him. I think take your, take your props when they're given. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I may, uh, I may get torched for this, but I'm, I'm on the same page as you. And, you know, he, he has been marketed since college before, you know, he, you knew who he was even before he agreed to like, before he committed to go to Duke because of social media and video, you know, you see videos of him just dominating in high school. And then he goes to one of the premier colleges and he does extremely well there and he's dominating at that level. And then when he comes in and yes, it is only 19 games and you can use that as a kind of a strike against him. But if you're talking about overall, like people knowing who is this? Who you know? If if I put Ja Morant and Zion side by side across the country, across the world, more people are going to know Zion than they know Ja, and and that's just you know you could argue different people for that cover, but because of the nature of this show, we're going to talk about these two guys, and so I I don't have an issue with it. I. I hope that he develops into the player that they're projecting him to be because it's going to be fun to watch. You know, do I want Ja to do well in the Grizzly? Of course, of course I want those things. But I'm not on the boat of I want to see Zion completely flop because he's getting all of this high. No way. I'm not going to wish that on this kid. He, he has put in the work. He's put in the effort. And he has got himself to this level – let him have it. Congratulations. And I think that this is probably just the first of many things to come for him based off of the, the, the things that we've seen so far in his career. Absolutely. And I, I think we all have our team alliances, but at the same time, we're all NBA fans as well. You know, we, we talk about this stuff and we promote it and, and, and review it and, and, but overall we love it. And that's why, I think at the end of the day, if it's going to market the casual fan and say someone um, sees Zion and they go, that guy looks like a like a big beast and I know who this guy is and, and that's more, more viewers coming to the game to watching it and they might not go and say, I'm going to be a Pelicans fans. It might be exactly the same. They might get the LeBron effect and they say, I'm going to actively um, you know, cheer against him and, and go for a different team. But if that's someone else that's being brought to this game, well, I think that's that's all the better for it. And I think, um, you know, Zion, Ja, they're all... These guys are the face of the league going forward. I can see the, the thinking behind it is that it's the next generation, you know, when LeBron's gone, when Giannis is ageing, when, when Kevin Durant's at least 31, 32, coming off 
injuries. The, the current faces of our league are moving into that next phase. They're not going to be here forever. So mm -hmm. to be able to put a guy like Zion, he's just turned 20, I think it was yesterday or the day before, um, as the face, they're saying this is going to be what the league is going forward. This is one of the guys you're going to see and, and come and watch and come and play and, and, and get involved. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, he, he's hit the front. And I, and I think you're exactly right. The brand recognition is, is a big thing. Their um, 2K marketing team, I don't think, uh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> um, they, they put him on there because the casual fan knows who he is. Right. Yeah. yeah and, and I think that... You know, when, when you have hardcore fans, there's going to be things that they know that they don't have to target the hardcore fans because the hardcore fans are going to be there regardless. They want exactly. to get the people that are kind of on the fence about it. And when you get a face that they know, that's what's going to reel them in. And I, just like I said, I, I have zero issue with this. I'm, you know, if it had been Ja, would I have been more excited? Yeah. Sure, I would have, but I I understand, and, and that's uh, it, it is it's tough to watch people because some people get super toxic about this stuff, and I'm like, it's really it doesn't make that much difference. It's the cover of a video game. It's a big deal, sure, but you know, don't put it on him. Zion didn't go to them begging to be the cover athlete. They went to him. They choose who they want, and they picked him and. You know, I, I saw, and and it wasn't surprisingly, it wasn't all Grizzlies fans that were hating because of the fact that he had only played a short amount of games. And one guy he pointed out that LeBron played in the league for like I think it was nine or ten years before he got on the cover. Yeah, it, it doesn't always have to be the best player in the league on the cover of the game, and that that's occurred multiple times throughout the uh the history of this game that it hasn't been the best player and uh you know i'm fine with that so congratulations to zion good luck and uh you know i, I think that the the hype that 2k has built up around their game by choosing him whether you know, a lot of people say whether you have uh any publicity is good publicity. So, you know, if you're getting positive from it, you're getting negative from it, it's all building up the the game. And I'm sure they're hoping they're going to sell more copies than they ever have. So we'll see about that. Yeah, One other... I mean, all of the marketing and the like around it, they've, they've piped it right up. They've got the three cover athletes, one of them being the late Kobe Bryant, the other being Damian Lillard. You know, they, they know what they're doing. They're, they're picking guys that uh, the people want to see and... and that are going to sell copies at the end of the day, that's what they're doing. So, you know, if that gets people involved with the NBA, well, I'm happy with that. One last Zion thing. And then we will, uh, we'll move into the, the schedule headed these, uh, the eight games before the playoffs. We'll discuss that. But, uh, th did you see the new, uh, I'm going to call it a charm. It's a, it's a chain Zion, the custom made chain that Zion had made. First off, but before you answer that, are you uh are you an Avengers guy? Did you watch those movies? Yeah, no, I'm a big uh, big Marvel person, so yeah, I've seen them all, and yeah, love them. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so when I saw that, I was very excited. Yeah, so if you if you haven't been on Twitter, if you didn't get a chance to see it, uh, Zion got a custom made charm, and it's uh, it's Thanos's uh, glove, and it's holding the basketball. It it looks amazing there's some uh really close like zoom in pictures of it where you can see the detail it has all the infinity stones on it um it's man you know I, I don't have that kind of money to buy something like that but if i did i probably would because uh yeah, i'm i'm a huge marvel nerd and marvel and basketball together in one boom take it just take my money send it down send it to me let's go no uh, that was uh that was super cool i really really like that and uh one of one of my uh, one of the guys, the beat writers in Memphis, uh, saying he, he tweeted at John Moran. He's like, "All right, man, you got to step it up." And he he had a picture of the uh, the gauntlet, 
And he's like, you can't let him outdo you on this. And I, I'm not sure what, uh, what Ja can bring to overcome the, uh, the gauntlet with the basketball, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe he brings something to it. Absolutely. I, I think it, it looks really cool. Um, it, it shows me, or well, it gives me flashbacks of, uh, when Ben Simmons, uh, famous Australian, uh, bought a charm himself he bought a boxing kangaroo and he had that and was wearing around his neck um similar thing i mean this um this thing that he's got this um thanos infinity infinity stone glove you know i just think it just looks wicked uh, i reckon good on him go and uh go and show it off and uh you know we're all young at some point so um you know i'd, I'd wear one as well if i could I'll probably get laugh because I'm not half as built as he is, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no good on him. Yeah, it would look a look a lot bigger on me than it does on him because he is a, a mountain of a dude for sure. Absolutely. All right, so let's. Uh, I got the Grizzly schedule pulled up here and um, just run through that real quick, and then want to compare them, break them down, and get predictions. See. Uh, what you think the Grizzlies are going to do, and then we'll move to the Pelican schedule and talk a little bit about the, the differences. So yeah, sure. the, the Grizzlies, eight games, first game, uh, they, have, they go Trailblazers, Pelicans, Thunder, Celtics, Spurs, Jazz, Raptors, and they end with the Bucks. Yeah. And when this was first released, I, I, I was going to do a show and talk about this as soon as it was released, but I wanted to sit back and kind of wait and watch how people responded to the scheduling and see what their take was and then do a show about it and talk about it. Like give you my points and, you know, also watching reactions, give you uh, another little something to add to your conversation. So as a, as a Pelicans guy, you know, the remaining 18 games, the Grizzlies had the hardest schedule in the league. The Pelicans were closer to the easiest schedule. Or maybe, was it the Pelicans had the easiest and the Grizzlies were closer to the hardest? I can't remember. It's been too long now. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that was so, good. you know, it, it's pretty tough. You're, you're looking at, you know, it, there's not an easy game in that schedule anywhere. And, and not that when you're going into this bubble with the teams that are invited to the bubble, you're not really going to get an, a quote unquote easy game, but it, it's a pretty tough road for the, the Grizzlies. This, uh, this eight games could be really, really tough on the, the game that I look at, you know, obviously the Pelicans game is the second game that they play you know, August 3rd, but if I'm looking at this schedule, the Spurs matchup on the second is probably going to, that would like slide in as the easiest game because the Spurs are going to be missing LaMarcus Aldridge. And that's not, not you know, that that team, you know, can definitely still beat you even though they're missing him. Um, they didn't take it easy on them. I think that the league as a whole done a good job making these eight game schedules because it was not a, a slot of, hey, let's make it easy for the teams that are there. We're going to – it feels like they kind of looked at what the remaining schedule was and based it off of that. So I was – well, I would have liked to have seen a little bit of easier schedule for the Grizzlies, but also know what they had in those 18 games. So I – like, this is okay with me. I, I, they – the the Blazers game, they could win that game, could win the Spurs game. The Pelicans have thumped the Grizzlies all year long. You know, uh, that that's um I just honest to goodness, the, the Grizzlies Pelicans, that matchup for the Grizzlies is just it's tough. It's it's not a good matchup for them. That game could go either way. Um the Grizzlies they beat the Jazz already this year. OKC is a tough game. And, man, I can't pick, you know, like I said, the, the one game that is kind of the, the easiest is the Spurs, but I can't look at this schedule and say, hey, there's one team on here that I feel like we match up against as the Grizzlies 
that we can dominate this team. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, uh, and with the original 18 games, I know they, they worked it out by just removing the teams that weren't going to be there um, to finalise the, uh, the worked out. Um, that they all had around eight games. I think they must have tweaked it a little bit to make sure that everyone uh, played the same amount. But, you know, Memphis has been dealt a pretty tough um, draw towards the end of the season, you know. Does that mean that they had an easier season um, earlier on? Well, you know, it's all conjecture, I suppose. And I think the hardest thing about all of this is, is we can all cast our, I suppose, predictions with it all. But it's the biggest question mark until we actually get in there and see what these guys look like. You know, every team has had three and a half months off. Um, guys are, are missing players. Memphis is going to be healthy for the most part from from all reports. Um, the Pelicans will be in the same boat. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how this plays out once it's actually on the court and these teams are out are out there playing. Um, you know, New Orleans has a pretty big, a pretty hectic schedule as well, it looks like. For most part, it might have a few easier um, matchups. I know that uh, we have belted you a couple of times, the, uh, the Pels and the Grizz, so that'll be a, a game to watch. You're spot on with the Memphis-San um, Antonio game. I think that is a must win. I think Memphis can't drop that one um, just to protect their own space. And they need to make sure that to avoid that play and that they win as many of these games as possible. If they drop a couple of the ones that have to be perceived as the gimmies, I guess, or the easier games, um, you know, all of a sudden the Pelicans or even Blazers or or um, the the Kings as well can all trigger that play and they're all on fairly similar standings. So, you know, if Portland drops the first one, then they're probably done. Um but otherwise, it is going to be very, very interesting to see how that, that final spot plays out. And, um, yeah, I think it's it really is the, the Grizzlies' uh, spot to lose at this point. Um, they've got a hard road, but if they can just pull out a couple of upsets, if they could beat Utah, um, that'd be pretty good. If, if they could beat the Pelicans, it'd be good for the Grizzlies, not so good for the Pels. But, um, you know, it'd be very interesting to see how this all all plays out uh, going forward and, and whether or not the uh, the standings just remain as they are and, and we head into the playoffs, yeah, standing pat. But it'll be interesting to see, no doubt, the, uh, the cheeky eight-game schedule. You know, they've got the, you know, you're talking about the East being loaded in the top and their last mm-hmm. three games are against, you know, to three of the top teams in the East. Mm-hmm. So where where do those teams sit in the standings? Their their last game is against the Bucks. So this looks like you know that's going to be the last game prior to the playoffs. Are the Bucks going to be locked in? And so they only play their guys part time. That could play in the Grizzlies' favor. There's a lot of uh, variables whenever it comes to it. You know, if you get down to the Raptors, Celtics, and Bucks, and though the those teams are still playing, like there's something at stake for those teams and you're playing them at full strength and you know the the grizzlies are underdogs in all three of those games and that's not a you know i i'm not trying to take a cheap shot at the grizzlies but it just is what it is you know there's the the grizzlies are young and they're just not at that level yet you know you got raptors celtics bucks back to back to back and like you say the the earlier games the spurs the jazz you know, I really feel like in order for the Grizzlies to make the playoffs, I feel like the Pelicans, maybe not that game, maybe not the third, but I feel like they will have to beat the Pelicans in order to maintain that eight seed. So whether it be that third game or if they meet them in a, uh, in a play-in game, I think they're going to have to beat the Pelicans at some point. And like I said, I I think that the Pelicans are just a tough matchup for the Grizzlies because you have, you know, stars are stars and stars are going to do the things that you need them to do in most cases. But your secondary guys are what really makes a difference. And the speed of um, 
and, and I apologize. I'm probably I'm, it, Melly is he? He's one of your like the stretch big guys. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and he just Valanchunas cannot keep up with him. He he cannot. He's a, Melly is just too fast, and it just that lineup when they were playing Melly out there. You, you couldn't even have Alan Tunis on the floor, and it took away from what the Grizzlies, like a, a weapon that the Grizzlies have. And so, not, not that Melly in particular makes it a tough matchup. Obviously, you have Zion and Drew and J.J. Redick and, you know, there's Derek Favors. There's other guys on that team, but just overall, like the from top to bottom, the Grizzlies-Pelicans matchup is a tough matchup for the Grizzlies. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you come across matchups like that, you know, like you said, Melly and Valanchunas, it, it negates a huge weapon for, for the um, Grizzlies because he sits there as a as a wall, you know. You can't get around him. He rebounds like an absolute monster. He he's on, works on both ends of the ground. But when you've got quick guys that stretch the floor, all of a sudden you have to adjust to that team and, and it... And it yeah, it makes you change your own game plan, I guess, and, and that is going to be difficult. Honestly, it's unfortunate the Grizzlies have got the... Well, I mean, it's good for the Pelicans, but for the for the Grizzlies and the Grizzlies fans, you know, to come up against the three top teams in the East, probably when they're gearing up to go into the playoffs, that is the worst timing, I think. You know, if you had a face of those guys in the middle couple of games, say you got them as four, five, and six or even uh, three, four, and five, I don't think they're going to play each of their guys 30-plus minutes a game. I think the main guys are going to be playing maybe 25 just to get a bit of run in the legs and get a bit of shot, Mm -hmm. uh, get a bit of rust out, sorry. But to cop them as your final three, you know, they're gearing up for the playoffs. You're going to be getting 36 minutes of Giannis, probably. Yeah, Um, (laughs) that's a... you just don't know, like wait, what what side are you going to get of that? And that's yeah, you're exactly mm-hmm. right. You know, I'd much rather face them at, at game two or game three than face them at at game eight where they're where they're really gearing up. But um, you know, the thing about these these grizzly guys though is that they they scrap and that it might not be the the grit and grind of old, but that's still there and that's still ingrained in that Memphis team that they will just keep going. And and that was something that I like. In, I Honestly, I really enjoy watching the Grizzlies games and, and because they play a brand of basketball that is tough. And, you know, they, they might catch a few teams off guard if they can really dig in. Well, here's hoping for you guys, not for the Pels fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now but before we move on to the Pell schedule, we're gonna, I'm going to look at this, and like I already I have my mind made up. I was looking at it, kind of picking and choosing. I want your prediction. What do you think the Grizzlies will finish this eight-game stretch? What do you think their record is in, in these eight games? And you, you, can be, uh, you can give me an honest opinion. You don't have to uh, be nice because it is a Grizzly show. If you, if you think 0-8, oh you can shoot that out there. It's all right. I don't. I honestly don't think they're going to go zero and eight. I think they're going to be better than that. I think they're going to beat. Um, who are they going to beat? They pro. They sh- should beat Portland, I reckon. But then again, Portland's going to get a couple of players. So that's probably fifty fifty. Um, you know, I think they'll beat San Antonio. I think without Lamarcus Aldridge, they're just too small. Um, Jakob Pertl's going to have to play big minutes. I think Pelicans are going to beat you. <laughs> but I might be biased. Um, <laughs> I honestly think you guys match up well with Utah Jazz, so I think that could be a that'll be a good one. You know, especially with no Bogdanovich, he's opted out. Um, I think that's a guy that really spreads the floor for them. And if they don't have that, that throws them into um, a bit of disarray. Joe Ingles will have to play bigger minutes um, if he goes. Um, I think you will beat. Um, I think the OKC one will come down to the wire. I think Memphis could win that. Um, the Toronto game, it depends what version of Toronto you're going to get. Um, you know, they're gearing up. That's Sunday the 9th of August. They'll be looking at heading in the playoffs probably that next week. Um, so guys will be starting to come back. You might catch them on the tail end and they don't have all their players playing big minutes. 
So fingers crossed you could pull that one out. We also got to remember that in all of these games, no team has home court advantage. So the crowd's out of it. You know, the, heading up to Toronto is notorious for being a tough matchup because of the crowd as well. Celtics are the same. Mm-hmm. So you take that out. What version of these players are you going to get when they don't have that six man on the court being the crowd and the fans? Mm-hmm. So, you know, if they can play into that, if, 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 if that is taken to the Grizzlies' advantage and they say, well, all right, your crowd is out of it, you don't have that surge when a big dunk happens. It's it really is just to go through the motions, grind it out, sort of, sort of, um, I suppose competition. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of a factor that plays into some of these big teams as well. When a huge three from Fred Van Bleet goes in and no one says anything, you know, you don't get that momentum surge that, that with the crowd behind you. So, um, yeah, honestly, I, I think Memphis could go could go four and four. I think they could go five and three as well. So I think the only three that you could really count them out of is the three um, Eastern Conference ones, I reckon. I think, yeah, those those teams are powerhouses and they're just as good as any team in the West. Um, the rest, I think, are gettable, maybe not the Pelicans. So you probably could go three, five or five, three, depending on a couple of those question mark games. But it wouldn't surprise me if they if they went five and three. Yeah, I was uh, sorry. I, I was sitting at the at four and four at five hundred, yeah. and that is like the the three Eastern Conference teams. Obviously, any given day, any team can beat any team. But you know, you're looking at paper matchup. Those three yeah. teams are superior to the Grizzlies at this point. the The Blazers, if this was last season then I would hands down take the Blazers over the Grizzlies. But Damian Lillard and the Blazers, they they have not looked good this year. There's nothing that they have done, even when they were, you know, which they they were not ever, I guess, fully healthy because of, um, oh, my goodness, Nurkic breaking his leg. You know, he, he didn't come back. But Whiteside had a great season up there. But they just... 